Hey everyone, welcome to On Tap. I'm Chris, and I'm not an expert, just a guy who enjoys good beer. So if you're new to this channel, I hope you stick around. And if you've been on this channel page before, you know that we've talked about beer from lots of different parts of the world. Europe, East Asia, Southeast Asia, the US, and Mexico. But you know what we haven't talked about yet? Africa. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Discussing the beers from the Horn of Africa, specifically Ethiopia and Eritrea, in a two-part series. This is video part one of two, and part two of two will be out shortly. Let's get to the episode. Now, realistically, unless you're tuning in from Ethiopia, in which case, hi, welcome to the channel, you're most likely gonna be able to find Ethiopian beer in towns and cities that have Ethiopian diaspora communities. So this would be Los Angeles, DC, New York, London, and actually, interestingly, Israel, where about 2% of Israel's population consists of Ethiopian Jews, and they're known, actually, as Beta Israel. Now, Ethiopia, being a country that's sort of not directly in kind of the Western sphere of control, is a place where modern beer as we think about it was really introduced in kind of the 20th century, mostly by European expats living in the country. Now, Ethiopia actually has always pretty much been an independent nation, so beer being introduced wasn't because of sort of a European takeover or European colonialism. Yes, Italy did occupy the country for like a hot second during World War II and a couple of years prior. Basically, the country's sort of been independent. Now, Ethiopia does have sort of its own traditional alcoholic beverages. Um, they've got something called Tej, which is basically like sort of a honey wine. Think think mead. I haven't had it before. It's definitely on my bucket list though. And then something called Tela, which is made from barley. So it's kind of similar to beer, but it is more or less kind of its own thing. Modern beer brewing in Ethiopia, very much a 20th century thing, brought in by European expats, but not because of European colonialism. The oldest brewery to be established in Ethiopia was the St. George Brewery in 1922, named in honor of the patron saint of Ethiopia, St. George. Now, if you're English or Russian or Catalan or Georgian, the country, not the state, or you're just a perplexed viewer wondering, what's up with that? Time for a little bit of a history lesson. Ethiopia, or at least core Christian Ethiopia, has historically been an Orthodox Christian nation for a very long time, honestly longer than most places in the world. Now, yes, while lots of Christian people have St. George as their patron saint, Ethiopia takes St. George very, very seriously. All that is to say, Ethiopia, St. George, kind of a big deal. In that context, what better way to uh, start your brewery off and gain national attention than by naming it after a beloved national religious icon? So the brewery got going in 1922, and while, yes, Ethiopia was an independent country, all of the brewers pretty much were European expats. The main founder was Belgian. Then in 1952, the government actually nationalized the brewery, and this was part of a larger campaign by the government to sort of kick out all foreign influence from the country in the mid-20th century. Over the course of the late 20th century and into the 1990s, the brewery continued continued to produce beer that grew in popularity amongst the Ethiopian people. And eventually, by the end of the 20th century, the brewery was seen as kind of a point of national pride, because St. George beer remained the most popular beer in the whole country, despite the fact that there were now tons of foreign beers getting imported into Ethiopia. It's kind of like what happened with Urn Brew in Scotland and Inca Cola in Peru, where both of those sodas actually beat out Coca-Cola in the local markets. All that's to say that as of right now, St. George beer is still the most popular beer in all of Ethiopia. St. George beer is today considered the national beer of Ethiopia, and it is still the most popular beer consumed in the whole country. Though technically the brewery now is owned by a big French multinational, uh, Castel. But nonetheless, the beer hasn't changed, and so it's still you know, produced, brewed by locals, and is based around the country in which it grew up. So in that sense, it is still kind of a local beer. The second most popular beer in Ethiopia after St. George is Walia. Now, Walia is actually the only Ethiopian beer I've had as of the filming of this episode, and was actually an inspiration for the video, or rather, okay, you know, story time. So, a few months back, I'm having dinner with a friend of mine who is a massive fan of Ethiopian food and culture in general. Guy's not even Ethiopian, he's Taiwanese American. Anyway, so we're having dinner, uh, Ethiopian food, obviously, and I tell him about the channel. So then he says, well, basically, you know, Chris, you gotta try some Ethiopian beer. And I think, yeah. I do need to try some Ethiopian beer, don't I? I have a bit of an aha moment. Anyway, so I order a Walia, it works for me. After dinner, we wander around the little Ethiopian neighborhood and we go into the local Mercado and lo and behold, there are no less than eight different brands of Ethiopian and Eritrean beer. So next thing you know, two part episode special. Thanks, Craig. Now, Walia beer has only been around since 2014. It was actually created by the Heineken Corporation as essentially a local Ethiopian brand. And I'll talk about this more later on, but basically since 2011, the Heineken Corporation has made massive roads into Ethiopia, buying up lots of sort of local labels. They also constructed a new brewery in 2014, the Kalinto Brewery, in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, which is now sort of acting as the primary seat of power for the Heineken Corporation in the East African uh, region. But nonetheless, the fact 
fact that Walia is already the second most popular beer in Ethiopia and growing in popularity, having only rolled out in 2014, shows that it clearly has some appeal. Next up is the Harar Brewery, located in Harar, Ethiopia, which is in the eastern part of the country and a little bit outside of the core Amharic-speaking, sort of Orthodox Christian-dominated part of core Ethiopia. The brewery was opened in 1984 and was originally a fully run government enterprise, but then Heineken came in and purchased the brewery in 2011 as part of Heineken's push to sort of buy up lots of local Ethiopian breweries. Another popular brand is Bedele. Founded in 1993 as a fully run government enterprise towards the end of what was essentially communist rule in Ethiopia, more to be discussed on that in part two, the Bedele Brewery is located in the western part of the country and aside from producing for the local market, also exports beer to the US, Canada, Australia, and of course, Israel. Now, like Harar, Bedele was acquired by the Heineken Corporation in 2011. And this was, again, part of Heineken's big push to buy as many local Ethiopian brands as it possibly could. It really does seem like Heineken was the first major multinational to make serious inroads into the Ethiopian beer market. And by some estimates, all of its local subsidiaries together, Walia, Harar, and Bedele, make up the largest share of all beer produced in the whole country. And there might be a reason for that. You see, beer consumption in Ethiopia has grown tremendously since the early 2000s and is in fact one of the fastest growing industries in the whole country. According to Heineken, beer consumption in Ethiopia may have doubled in just five or six years between about 2010 and 2015. And a huge amount of that growth came from local brands. So not beer that was getting imported from abroad, but actual Ethiopian breweries, which then increasingly were bought up by big multinationals. So you know, good job Ethiopia, even if Heineken is lurking there somewhere in the background. Now there wasn't a tremendous amount of information that I could find about a lot of these companies, or at least two or three of them. But um, if anyone's tuning in from Ethiopia and or is, you know, an Ethiopian expat in a Western city, let me know down in the comments below. I'm all ears. So all the beers we're going to be trying are lagers, but really quickly to highlight their differences, St. George. This light lager is going to have a slightly sweet flavor, specifically in the form of a kind of sweet corn taste. Walia. This light lager has a somewhat more bitter flavor, though there's also a little bit of that sweet corn undertone, as well as some malty notes. Harar. This light golden lager is supposedly quite balanced between hoppy and malty flavors. Bedele Special. A bit more of a hazy golden lager, this lager's slightly sweet flavor profile derives more from kind of a honey malt taste. So let's taste some Ethiopian beer, shall we? Up first, we have St. George. And um, we can see there's a St. George on his horse with a lance uh, spearing a dragon, classic St. George imagery. Yeah, so looks like a lager. Smells like a lager. There's maybe very, very sw slightly sweet notes on this. Let's give it a taste. It's a decent lager. Um, it's very easy to drink. It's got an okay body. So this beer kind of has the flavor of, of like a non-Pilsner lager. And I'll talk about this in later videos where Pilsners, they basically have higher levels of hops in them. Um, they're the most sort of common popular beers. But this one has just a little touch of sweetness to it. Um, it's reasonably crisp, reasonably clean. It's not, I would say, super crisp. It's a bit more on the sort of slightly sweeter, slightly smoother and kind of lighter side. But it's very easy to drink. Um, it's very non-offensive, and there is just sort of a little, tiny little hint of that of that sweet corn flavor. Let me see if I can get it sort of on the second taste. Again, I, if you told me this was sweet corn, I probably wouldn't be able to place it exactly to that, but there is there is a bit of that kind of, yeah, sweet, sweet kind of malt. Perfectly enjoyable beer to drink. Next up, we have Walia. And uh, logo on this, you can see um, a couple of, uh, I believe, ibexes. Uh, I might be totally wrong about that, but certainly, certainly a sort of mountain goat type type animal. Anyway, let's get Lilia cracked open. Looks about the same. Standard sort of pale lager color. A little bit of the head, not much. Now this doesn't have any sweetness in the in the aroma. This lager is a little bit more crisp. It really doesn't have any sweetness. I'm not, I'm not really tasting any sweetness in this. Uh, this has more of that kind of generic beer kind of Pilsner feel to it. It would be really in a similar category to, well, kind of like a Heineken. It's not exactly like a Heineken, but it's pretty close in that sort of general flavor profile. It is inoffensive, 
reasonably carbonated, slightly malty, little bit of hops. It's reasonably crisp, not exceptionally crisp, but you know, to a degree. And um, you know, the body's, the body's perfectly acceptable. Uh, there's nothing really about this that's jumping out at me though. It's very, uh, it's very standard. Third, we have Harar beer. Here we go. And bottle in the Harar Brewery, Ethiopia, and uh, sort of a, you know, stone, stone gateway here. Looks just like the other two. Let's give it a taste. So this one definitely has more of a notable hops profile to it compared to the other the other two. It has the most sort of, I would say, kind of pilsnery taste of uh, the lagers on the table. There's, and by pilsnery, what I mean is you can tell that there's sort of that that crisp, slightly dry kind of hoppy bite to the beer. The body's perfectly fine. And it sort of is a preference of, you know, do you prefer a beer that's a little bit sweeter or a beer that's a little bit sort of, you know, drier and kind of hoppier. So I would say it's very accurate saying that it's got sort of a balanced flavor profile to it. Um, you know, bit of malt, reasonable body. Um, you don't really have any sweetness in this. And uh, yeah, it's more of a sort of a dry, dry hoppy. Um, obviously, you know, right, we're not talking IPAs or anything. This is very much in the realm of kind of your standard garden variety table lager, just with the slight variation of a little bit more kind of hoppy dryness rather than sort of mellow sweetness. Last up, we have Bedele, or Bedele Special, should I say. Export. The Bedele Special Export Beer. For a lager, there are kind of a mix of things here. There's one element that is not really doing it for me, and then there is also a sweet element that I kind of like. So I think compared to these other three, this is sort of a mix of kind of good and bad at the same time. What I like is it's got definitely notable sweetness to it, and I would say that that sweetness is, you know, maybe very slightly different from the St. George in terms of, um, in terms of the sweetness profile. But the other thing about this though that I'm not as huge a fan of is it has, there's a little bit of a foundation of that kind of um, slight, I've sometimes described it as sour though, that's not quite right, but sort of the, the taste of not particularly high-end beer that's sort of the foundation. So there's kind of a nice sweetness on top of it. The body is acceptable, but it's got a little bit of that sour kind of bitter taste of, of, generally, <clears throat> of generally kind of lower market beers. The unpleasant taste, um, there's way less of that on the second drink. There's still, there's still a tiny bit of it. It was weird, actually, the, so the second drink, it's more almost generic. Like I actually got less flavor in that second drink overall from the first drink. So I think what I'm gonna need to do is, I, I, I'm getting an idea of I think which ones are in, which ones are in first and second, uh, but I'm gonna wanna do a little bit more sort of flavor composition Flavor, compar flavor comparison. Seriously, this is the first episode we've shot today. Like, I'm not, I'm not tipsy at all. I'm just sort of slurring my words a little bit. Uh, it's been, a, it's been a long week. I want to do sort of a little bit more kind of flavor profile comparisons now that we've got all four open and see kind of how they stack up against each other. Did a little bit more sampling, getting a sense of the flavor profiles, given the fact that these are all sort of table loggers, more or less and I've got my final assessment. So in fourth place, I think it has to be Waldia. Despite the fact that I did have this before, and in the restaurant at least, I, I quite enjoyed it. Um, stacked up against these other beers, this one is the least impressive. It uh, tastes sort of very generic, very kind of like a standard mass-produced lager. Um, I would still have one if it were available, so I wouldn't sort of turn my nose up at it if I were at a party or at a dinner or whatnot. But compared to what else is available, this one's not doing much for me. It's got a very kind of bland, generic beer taste to it without really any notes that kind of stand out in any meaningful way. In third place is the Bedelli Special. This one, I will give it a little bit of points in the sense that it has some notable sweetness to it that does stand out. 
Uh, and that aside from that first drink I had, um, there aren't really any obvious unpleasant kind of undertones to it. It is weird how between first drink and second drink, you know, you kind of have slightly different different tastes that come through in a beer. I don't know why that is, and I know other people have had that sort of that same experience. But this one is fine, body is sort of acceptable, uh, but the, the foundation sort of on which the sweetness is based, I, I think could probably be a little better, but it's certainly more interesting than this. In second place is Harar. What works with Harar is the fact it is just sort of a reasonably well done, I would argue kind of Pilsner style lager. It's got that kind of little bit of hoppy dryness, a bit of crispness to it, acceptable body, very easy to drink. And there's nothing really about it that sort of doesn't work or makes you think this is fine, but what about that? You know, sort of whether it's like a weaker body or a you know slightly unpleasant note or sort of you know mass-produced beer taste. You know, it, it doesn't it doesn't have really any of that, so it works perfectly fine kind of in all in all sectors. And then in first place, though, I gotta give it to Saint George. I, I honestly think this is the best of the four. What I like about this is the fact that not only does it have sort of a nice light body to it, and I mean that in a good way, not in a sort of like weak watery way. It's got a nice light body to it. I really like the way that the sweet corn is sort of worked into the flavor profile where you've got this nice note of very clear sort of sweetness to the beer, but not too much, like sort of in a good kind of non-Pilsner lager way. It's very easily drinkable. It adds a little bit of a good note in a way that adds for a slightly sort of more, I think, interesting drinking experience than with these other beers, or more, I would say, more unique or maybe unusual drinking experience. The other thing I kind of just briefly want to talk about is also, you know, the environment in which you're going to be drinking this, and also Ethiopian food in general. So I've had a couple times in my life, I haven't had it a ton, but I'd love to eat more of it, actually. Um, and it's a very unique type of cuisine where you've got um, something called injera bread, which is kind of this really thin, spongy, uh, you know, kind of flat bread. It's, it's almost served to you like a... Um, this is gonna be a weird analogy, but almost like a rolled up bandage, where it's kind of this big, big kind of roll and you kind of unroll it. And um, then you put lots of kind of uh, stewed meat, stewed vegetables and kind of um, thick collections of, of food on top of it. And then you use the bread to kind of eat the, the food. The flavors are often very kind of spicy and strong and bold. And additionally, on top of that, the fact that a lot of Ethiopia is, um, you know, reasonably hot weather climate, not all of it, a bunch of it's in the mountains. Definitely it can get pretty, pretty warm there. Uh, you want some beers that are going to be reasonably inoffensive and that can pair with kind of bold spicy food in a reasonably hot or, or at least kind of heavy food, not all but spicy, but heavy food. And they can pair with it in sort of a, a reasonably hot climate, at least, you know, a lot of the time. In that sense, all these four beers make sense. But if you were asking me which one do I most want to go with while eating Ethiopian food, it's definitely going to be these two. W what's best about this is it really just comes down to which of these beers do you prefer? Do you prefer a lager that's a bit more of a Pilsner style lager, where it's got a little bit more of that kind of dry Christmas to it? Or do you prefer a lager that's more of a non-Pilsner style and it's a little bit more sort of mellow, smooth, and sweet? Let me know what you think in the comments. Did I do a good job? Did I get totally off the mark? I'm assuming most of you have probably not tried these beers before. For a lot of you, you might not have access to, to these beers. We can, you know, we can only access what we can access in the city that we live in. If you live in a city, uh, LA, New York, DC, London, Israel, any Israeli viewers, and of course, Ethiopian viewers, what do you think of these beers if you're able to try them? Um, check them out. I would, again, especially recommend St. George. I'll see you next time. All right, thanks for tuning in.